Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and welcome to Learning Game Development. So in this section we're going to cover the basic layout of the Unity engine and try to understand a couple of things, why they're set the way they are, how to change them and what we can use them for. Don't forget to click on the subscribe button and click on the bell icon as well to stay up to date with every video in this series and everything else on game development on my channel. With that in mind, let's get to work. So the first thing I want to work with here is changing how Unity looks. Now this is the default layout of Unity, it's also the light theme. And a lot of people do prefer to work with the dark theme. So let's change that first and foremost and see how it looks. So if we go to edit up here, we can go down to preferences and obviously there are a lot of different preferences. This is a massive game engine. Uh, I don't expect anyone to fully understand everything in all of this and to be honest there are some things that even I don't fully use or know what I could use them for but I know everything I need to know to get things done. Anyway let's change the editor theme from light to dark. You don't necessarily have to do this, it is a personal choice, personal preference, it's how you want your editor to look. So let's stick with the dark theme for now and let's check out all of the options that we have here. So here we have the hierarchy. What is the hierarchy? It is a place or a panel that we can select all of our objects that exist in our scene view. So main camera is selected and we can see it selected here in the scene view. These two go hand in hand quite well because this is where we build our game in the scene view and this is where we can see everything in item format so we can see the light and the camera. So by default when you create a new scene this is pretty much what you'll get within that scene and we can move things around if we want to by selecting these arrows moving up and down. All I'm doing there is holding down the left mouse button and if I hold down the mouse wheel we can pan around and if I hold down the right mouse button we can shift around and look wherever we need to. Uh, next along we have the game view. The game view is a way of actually playing what we have created in the scene view without the need to physically build the game itself. So if we were to press the play button up here it would basically just quickly compile what it needs to and then we'd be able to play what we have created. So if we say made a little dragon that flies around and we could control it we'd physically be able to play it in engine inside this window as long as we have play mode set on. Next we have the asset store. It's not existent in some versions of Unity and I think I mentioned previously we will talk about versions uh, but as of I think probably 2019 it was removed. Not entirely sure why this even exists now in the Unity engine. It may get removed uh, at some point but if you do have it and you get confused by all of this don't worry about it. Oh, so there's a message there saying it was 2020.1 onwards uh, which would have been released in 2019 so yeah that makes sense. Next we have this little section here known as the tools. Now a couple of versions ago they used to be up here in this section but now they are here by default and it's up to you how you want it to be. I mean you could move it up to the top, you could move it down the bottom and you can see how it's snapping by selecting the little blue section. So again it really is up to you how you want it to look. Over here we have the inspector panel. The inspector panel is probably the most complex bit of all of this layout. It's where all the information for each individual object is stored and they're all stored via something called components. A component is a little add-on that you can add to any object to basically define what the object can do and what it can't do. Every object by default should have a transform component and we can see here that if we move this around the position is changing as well. So the transform holds the position, the rotation and the size of any object. So we can physically change these if we need to. So if we want to change the Y rotation to 70 we could physically type it and we could also hold the left mouse button over the Y and drag it around and that is the same for every aspect in the transform component. Further down we have the camera component and obviously because this is a camera we have all the information that we would need for this camera to render inside Unity. We'll talk about cameras a little later on. Uh, but if we go to our directional light for example we can see that there is no camera component because it's not a camera, it's a light. So there is one specifically for lighting. There are hundreds upon hundreds of different components that you can choose to add to any game object. 
if you click on the add component section there it'll just give a bit of a weight and you can physically see all of these options here that you can add on so you can have an event effects audio and if you type in some words here you'll be able to search so i've searched for col which is just a collider and we can physically add these components to any object obviously some objects don't really need some components but most of the time it's pretty obvious which objects need which components as is the case with the camera and the light itself so further down here we have something called the project window and a project window is where we store all of our assets and an asset can be defined as anything from a script uh, to a music file to a model to a texture to a font file it could be almost anything which benefits the creation of the game so anything which you use to develop your game is classed as an asset next along we have the console and the console is a great way of checking out where you have errors, for example, in your script. So let's say you've written a C-sharp script and your game isn't working, there's an error. If you go to your console, it will physically tell you what the error is. It may not make sense. However, it should at least give an indication of what you need to do to fix up that error. And there's a lot more to it than just that we can use the console for various different things you know you may get warnings on there which aren't necessarily game breaking uh, it could also give you some information on your game uh, depending on what you have done with a script you could have uh, a debug output to say such a thing has happened and something else but for all intents and purposes the console is great for solving errors now one good thing about Unity is you can move all of these little sections around depending on how you want the layout to be. I've always found the default layout to be the most uh, not professional in, in terms of how professionals use it, but for new people, it's just comfortable and it's familiar. So on all of my videos, you'll usually find me using this particular layout, except uh, in certain times when I feel a different layout is absolutely necessary. And like I say, the reason I keep it like this is so as uh, everything I create here is aimed at new people to Unity. So obviously they feel more uh, comfortable working with what they see as default, but you can move things around. So let's move the hierarchy to there, see how that looks. Let's move the inspector over here and flip them around. Like I say, you can move these things anywhere you want to. Uh, let's put them there if we want. So I think realistically, there is so much that you can work with inside Unity and where you can place things, how you can have things. And it all comes down to personal preference. Never be afraid to change things. Never be afraid to work with things and move them around. You can also uncouple some of these tabs. So for example, we could take this game, drag it here, and it then becomes its very own window. And we can snap it back to there. We can move it along. And if you don't want a particular tab, you can click it or right click, I should say, and then close and it will get rid of it. If you ever need to add things back in, you can go to window and you'll be able to add various different things. So for example, the inspector panel, if we've accidentally deleted it, we can re-add it there. Now, there are plenty of different settings to work with Unity here. As you can see here, we can see all of these different options that we can select. One I want to quickly go through, uh, or at least show you how it works before we finish this section, is if we go to Window and go to Rendering, and let's go to Lighting. This is a good example of items and menus that are kind of hidden, they're not visible by default, but they are massively important. So lighting obviously is very important within the game and we can see that there are so many different settings here. I think for a lot of new people to game development, a lot of these settings just seem so off-putting. Uh, they may make you feel it's too much, but honestly, my advice would be never be afraid to explore, never be afraid to change things. And if you don't understand things, there are plenty of resources, whether it's myself or whether it's Unity, uh, the company themselves who have the information, that help is always available. So there are many different things that we can work with in Unity. And I think next time we're going to touch upon versions. It's massively important to talk about versions and platforms when it comes to game development but at this point this is how unity looks 
this is how we can work with it. And if you're a bit afraid or a bit off put by how it looks now, let me know in the comments. You know, I want to try and alleviate those fears. I want to try and help you become a game developer. Obviously, you've come to these videos because you want to learn how to make games. And that's what I'm here for. I'm here to help you take that first step into game development. We all have to do it. So, yeah, we all have to start somewhere. Hopefully, I will see you around in the next video. Thanks very much for watching, guys.